Good evening, I wrap Steve of Linden Associates with your Spider ETF wrap up and this wrap up is for Tuesday and we're at the 4th of May 2021 right now. So Apple down nearly four and a half dollars or so, XSD down hard. In fact, it was a big down day in the markets today. Uh, part of the day had to do with the market starting off looking heavy from all the techs all of the techs. If you looked at Amazon, if you looked at uh, a Apple, if you were looking, it didn't matter which one, Facebook, they were all looking weak. Then Janet Yellen later in the day making a statement that she expects interest rates to have to go up modestly as we come out of the COVID and the post pandemic. Why not? Well, she even walked that back in the afternoon as she realized when she said that, she sent the market down. She has a lot of influence. She's not just a treasury secretary. She's our first treasury secretary that also was a Fed chair. So she carries a lot of weight. The woman knows what she's saying. She ha knows how to speak. And I don't think that it was a misstep. She tried to walk it back and I, I watched the walk back. I was laughing at it. I, I knew what she was doing. So I've asked you to give me some ideas as to what you want. Now rotate. I'm not going to go heavy on stocks here. That is not what I want to do. So I'm going to give you more right now this week than I normally do. And then I want to bring back some spiders ETFs that have more volume. That's what I really want to do. But since it was asked and since people wrote to me, I said, okay, I haven't covered Apple and we might as well. To me, a chart is a chart, folks. It doesn't matter if the name's Apple whatever you're going to call it. I could care less. So when I look at the market, I see a pattern of lower highs, lower lows. Now coming into today, what kind of pattern did we have? I'm going to back up here. You had a higher high, higher low as of the close of business Friday. You then bounced on Monday. Now, if you have any day where you don't take out the high, the word is the high of a Monday, the swing line turns down and that's exactly what happened. I didn't expect it to go that deep, but anything that would do it. If you haven't taken my charting course, it's all taught in there. So that's giving you the downtrend. Okay. And now we take that, we start filtering. So let's go back instead of looking at just today. We have the 100-day average right here in green. We have the 18-day average in red, the 200-day average in the charcoal color. Where's the market? It's underneath the 18. So the bias is down. Next support in theory, 129.16, and the one under that, 121.85. Another support could be, where is the Bollinger Band? And that's right here. So what the market did, I'll back up right here. Here's the market coming in. This is Monday. This is today's action. It slices through the Bollinger Band the 100 day. It's either going to 122 or it starts fighting a battle right now to get back inside of the Bollinger Bands because you only stay outside of them 5% of the time. If I stand back here, not out very often, not out very often on breaks very little do you stay out. So that's the thing I start looking at in the market. I also look to see what's the slope, if any, of the Bollinger Band. This was obviously sloping up. You don't have that yet to the downside. Not seeing it at this point. I'm also seeing a market that's very oversold. So I see a market that there could be whatever reasons. I'm looking for a bit of a bounce here. We'll see what happens in it. Nothing bullish on the chart. Let's start and Describe it that way. Nothing that I can see. Bear camp, I still think here. I think the pros are not going to sell short in this range. Why? Because you're oversold. So I do think it can come up on short covering, but I'm not looking for that. Let's assume I'm wrong and the market just goes down. Look for very serious support at the 122 area, which you haven't even hit in God knows how long. That's the 200-day moving average of closes. I'm going to be dropping GameStop. I figured I'll finish up a few days with it and then it's gone. Higher high, lower and low, caught in this sideways action. All the pizzazz is out of this market. It's an old story. Reddit created it. God bless them. Those traders, they, they created a lot. And now the company's got a pocket full of cash and they can decide what kind of company they're going to be. Pave a new high. Why? Because we are now hearing the word compromise, compromise. The Democrats are trying to figure out ways 
that they have to go it alone to get their infrastructure bill passed, it probably won't fly. When they get to the Senate, they're going to run into people there that don't want to do it, and they probably get a few Democrats that may not want to do it. Certainly in the House, that's already the problem. So the question is, can they reach a compromise? But as long as they're all talking, it's friendly for infrastructure. People are saying, what is infrastructure? Marsha Blackburn today was coming out, and she was saying, well, it's what we all thought. It's roads, it uh, could be train tracks. I mean, it, it's the things we're used to. It isn't necessarily, in her mind, I'm not saying in that mind, the internet. It's certainly not social care. That I agree with her on. That, that is not infrastructure. That doesn't mean it shouldn't be addressed in some manner, but I don't think that's called infrastructure. So what do we have here? A market that is overbought into resistance, not breaking very much, but also saying, uh-uh, the pizzazz is gone, but the trend, the bias is staying up, and support keeps showing up against these numbers, this 18-day average for the meantime. In XSD, I've explained that they can talk all they want about these semiconductors. Yesterday I pointed out what I learned. It takes 26 weeks from the time you call up a semiconductor factory to order whatever your custom semiconductor is going to be, typically from that to delivery. I didn't realize that lead time with it. Uh, so, you know, you're not going to get rid of this shortage any time soon. We saw that the semiconductor industry said that in the first and second quarter of this year, there will be a loss of two and a half million automobiles or trucks lost in production, in other words, not being produced in the world because of this shortage, and try to imagine what it's doing to the auto companies in the U.S. that live on this basis that it comes in the door, we use it, it goes right out. They probably have to rethink how that all works. Potix. We had talked just yesterday, this market's got the big resistance up here at the 100-day average. Today, it pokes back through here. We're in this. And we're in, like so many of these markets, that sideways action. I wouldn't get excited about this bullish or bearish. Then we get to ESGU. Again, look at how narrow we've gotten into these Bollinger Bands. When you see that, be careful. You're not trending, but you do have momentum down and it's not oversold. If it continues to break, 94.17, I think that's where the pros are going to lift shorts. And if they're short, I don't see anything to be long or short on. XLE, the energy sector, the market is looking all past everything and it is saying we're going to be in post-COVID before you know it. Europe has already announced they're opening for everything in June and July. Tourism, come back, you're welcome. Okay, that's the energy sector. That's going to be pretty good news for that, wouldn't you say? It's holding up. And look at the job the Saudis have done on crude. They have really got the market balanced. I mean, they did, you, you got to applaud them. They, they really did their job. Uh, in SPY, higher high, lower low, no trend. Sort of meandering now. Momentum did turn down. If you drop from here, look for the uh, lower Bollinger Band to be support. Resistance is right here at 415. 37, and that's where you close 415.62. You're just on either side of that. In other words, I'm not excited about stock indices. The emerging market, 77.40, the low Bollinger Band. You tell me what today's low is, 77.41. You don't think the pros are looking at those numbers? I, I, it's what I think. So I think they're taking positions off. I do not think they're adding to short sales. I understand what the market got hit on. If Janet Yellen is saying higher U.S. interest rates, forget the word modest because she did use that. Higher rates, strong dollar, hurts the emerging markets. It's that equation in part. Uh, GLD went up right up to the 100-day average resistance. I don't see a trend here. I see a lower low, higher high in an overbought market that is trying to get both numbers back under 70 to make a decision on what to do. In the gold miners, tell me we're not stuck for the moment here at the 18-day average of closes with a pattern of a lower low and a higher high. Support, I'm going to look for the 100-day average. It's just not ready to do anything, and, and that's what I'm telling people. 
TLT. As nice as the rally has been, you still have a downtrend in the swing line. It's countered because today you closed over the 18-day average. It's active tomorrow if you get back under 138.99, potentially looking for 137 and a quarter. However, momentum you got to keep your eye on it. You don't want it turning up on you if the market starts down a little. You want that to at least flatten out. I think the bears do not have control because the market closed over the 18-day average. I think if you take out the lows of right here this day, 138.28, that will give them back their control, and they'll probably look for the next dollar on the downside. I don't know. I'm giving a guess, obviously. FXE, this is the euro. Momentum down, market right into what it should have done. Here's the market, loses the embedded reading. All we're looking for is the 18-day uh, average of closes. And for all purposes, that's what you did. And you're back down. This is today's action. Now you hit it for sure. And I don't know where you're at tonight. I didn't look just now. But it'll be in that general area is my guess. So I start you off each morning at 8.40. 8.40, I start recording. I'm through with my recordings typically by 9.10. The recording that I do in the morning covers you with all everything behind me, as you can see. It's about 20 minutes long. On the bottom of it, though, you, if you go to our website and you pull, you're able to see if you're, when you're there, I'll go to the spiders, I'll go to the tech sector, I'll go to the oil sector. I go to all the different sectors for you and they light up so you can know where you're at. I do it in just this way so that you're working with all that. The cost? Coffee went up. Did you read about that? It's going up everywhere now. It really is in all the stores. I'm in line. Cup of coffee for a month with your tip and you get all these videos. Come on, give it a try. Go to our website under the keyword, what? Research, it's all explained there. And next week, I hope you come visit me in my WhatsApp moment. It'll probably be around 12, 12.30 Chicago time. I'll let you know when we set it up. Take care.